What's going on fam? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you all been well. Today we got another episode yet again. Finally, something I've been waiting to do for a long time. Uh, the motor swap and everything kind of set me back a little bit, but now we're getting back on track. And for today, we are going to be installing a Pro Charger on my 2022 Tacoma. So it should be a pretty sick install. Should be a lot of fun. I'm going to kind of take my time with this. Should maybe take me about a day depending how long everything takes if i have any issues and stuff maybe two days but should be a pretty cool one um and hopefully it'll be able to help pull these 40s a little easier so i'm excited hope you are too and if you're looking to add some boost to your vehicle your truck whatever's uh this might be another option that you could look into and i'll show you guys the installation process on the way so for the first part of this installation what we're going to be doing is disconnecting the battery, taking the terminals off. We're going to pull the battery out because the Pro Charger is actually going to sit right here in this area. So I'm going to pull this out. Uh, I'm going to pull out the little speaker that I have for my PA system. I'm going to pull off the air box, uh, pretty much the cover, start doing everything, get my new spark plugs in, and then start working on the radiator, crank, all that other stuff, and then yeah so stay tuned we get started in the battery and then we'll go from there what we're going to be doing is taking off the engine cover and then start working on getting the air box out uh the math pretty much unplug everything the pcv and then uh, kind of start making some space pretty much got the inlet tube out with the math unplugged it so the wire for the math is right here there's a few of these little um things that kind of connect in to hold the wire in place so just gotta take those off the pcv over here uh since i do have the call intake mod i kind of just loosen the air box and just pushed it back just to give me some space next thing i'm going to be doing is taking off the cover right here the plastic cover for the radiator and then probably gonna start draining the radiator fluid so i got the grill taken off disconnected all the wires for the sensors took off the cover for the radiator uh, next step, what I'm going to be doing is draining. Let me see if I can get a light in there. So I'm going to be draining the coolant. There's this valve right here that you use to open. And then I'll drain whatever I can. And then I'll be able to pull the lower radiator hose. And that should drain the rest of it. The coolant is pretty much drained. Next thing we're going to do is take out the shroud. And then loosen the four bolts that hold on the fan. And give you guys an idea on the driver's side this bolt right here you guys can see is for the shroud and then under this hose uh, right here there's another 10 millimeter bolt so we're gonna take off those two bolts and then i'll show you guys the fan bolts if you guys can see it it's right here so there's four bolts that go around uh, I believe those are 10 mils as well. So we're gonna take those off, get the fan and the shroud, pull it out together, and then that'll give us a lot more space. Just keep in mind, uh, when you are buying these kits, they have different options where if you wanted to do, or if you have like a passenger side or driver side ABS. So typically, you know, the off-roads, they have the ABS on the driver side. So you can pick that. And then if you're gonna do an open filter or if you're gonna keep the factory air box, um, because I have the cowl intake mod that's in the back where the ABS would normally go, that's typically where you'd relocate the battery for this kind of kit. But because I have that, I chose to order the kit that uses or has the ABS on the passenger side and relocates the battery over here where the, where the washer pump is or the washer reservoir is. So the, for the me, the next step is going to be to unbolt the washer reservoir, get that out, and then I'm gonna start working on getting the mounting area for the actual battery. So we'll see that next. I'm just gonna kind of get this. I, I think it's almost empty, so it's kind of perfect. So I'm gonna take that out and then we'll move to the next step. I think I gotta shift the power steering um, reservoir a little over to fit that battery in there. So I got the factory washer pump or washer reservoir out and I loosened up the power steering uh, reservoir just kind of have it loose it's on the side right now 
And then um, for the next step, we're gonna be working on getting the crank bolt out. It's a little tricky if you have an automatic. Sometimes those bolts are really on there. Usually it's like a 250 pound torque or something like that. So if you have one of those tools that can hold the pulley in place while you break it free, that's usually the best. Uh, fortunately for me, I have a manual. So I just throw it in six gear and then it'll pretty much prevent all the pulleys from spinning. And then I'm just gonna use a breaker bar, break it free, get that bolt out. And then we're gonna be putting on the Pro Charger pulley that goes over the stock crank. So just to make things a little easier on myself, um, just kind of having a hard time with the breaker bar, just some weird angles and you know can't get enough leverage. So what I did was pull the radiator out since it's already drained. Uh, all it is is four bolts. I think they're 12 mil bolts that are in the front of the, behind the grill. So in, from the front of the truck. And then you use those four bolts, pretty much undo the upper radiator hose. Um, and then it pulls right out the top. So that will give me enough space to get my half inch impact in there and I can just zap the bolt right off. And then I'll leave it off for now. And then when I'm throwing everything back together, I'll get the radiator back in. We got the provided Pro Charger uh, crank pulley on. It's kind of loosely on there, kind of just zapped it a little bit. And then uh, there's two bolts that you use to pretty much keep it aligned with the crank. So there's a little bit of thread locker on those use the factory crank bolt and the torque for that 22 mil is going to be 205 foot pounds and then the two smaller i think they're 13s those are going to be what was it i think it was 100 foot pounds so once those are all torqued then we'll move to the next step so i just want to make a correction uh it's actually 100 inch pounds for the 13 foot bolts i don't know why i said foot pounds but yeah so there's gonna be 100 inch pounds and then the 22 mil is gonna be a 205 foot pound torque. Now that's torqued down. Next step we're gonna be doing is replacing the spark plugs. Since we have majority of everything off and we have a lot of space, I'm gonna go ahead, do all this, the spark plugs. Pro Charger recommends getting spark plugs that are one heat range colder. So there's like a bunch of different ones you can use. Um, I'll show you guys the ones that I got. Um, and I believe they're gonna be gapped to I don't even remember what the gapping was, but so I have these NGK Iridium spark plugs. The part number is 91961. And then I guess the serial number, or not the serial number, whatever it is, is DILFR7K9G. So you can get these spark plugs in. Not gonna really show that. Uh, it's just like a normal spark plug change. And then we'll get back to doing the Pro Charger install. So I just got the spark plugs all in, pretty much gapped to the right size and all that. So next step, I'm gonna be taking the oil filler neck off or the stock one off, and then I'm gonna be putting on, uh, I don't even know where I put it. It's around here somewhere. I'm gonna be putting on the one for the Pro Charger, and then we're gonna be moving on to the next step. And yeah. Got the new fill neck for the oil installed. It's right there. So there's the two 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, just keep in mind, when you take off the stock fill neck, you need to take the rubber O-ring that's on the bottom and then place that onto the new one from Pro Charger before you install that. Pretty much where I'm at now is, I had to install this bracket right here and it's connected to like an intake support. Um, there's like a spacer you gotta put back here. They give you two new bolts for this and then you take off the, uh, the bolt that's like right back here and then you replace it with a longer one and a spacer that goes in the back there uh, I had to un undo the tension on the belt slip the belt off the alternator side Remove this top alternator bolt and then I replaced it with this all thread and they give you like a measurement that you have to Insert and how much should be sticking out and then the spacer goes on that and then this idler pulley You take that bolt out you put another piece of all thread in there with um, the measurement that they give you, you slide the idler back on. And then I believe the next step is we're gonna be getting the Pro Charger kind of ready to be installed on the accessory drive and all that. So um, that's gonna be the next step. For this next part, uh, we're putting pretty much the accessory drive and the blower together, um, kind of getting everything bolted up nicely and secured. So I'll show you guys kind of how that looks. So this is, this is the blower right here. 
they have the drain hole and they actually include this drain line it's kind of optional you don't have to put it in but that way if when you're ready to drain the oil you can kind of just route this wherever it's easy for you to access that way you can drain it uh you do remove this idler pulley that's in this spot on the on the accessory drive and then that way you can install the blower on as uh so all these bolts there's two that are three eighths and then the other five are five sixteenths so just get those all tightened i'm gonna go ahead and put the idler pulley back on and then we're going to be dropping it back in the truck all right so i got the pro charger and the bracket pretty much all in uh, i got the belt so when i was putting this whole assembly in i kind of routed the belt on the pulleys just kind of you know how it's supposed to go i kind of left it loose and then i lined everything up and then once i got all the bolts in um pretty much started with the crank ran the belt they have the actual diagram for how you need to run it but just a quick note the back of the belt is always on the smooth idlers and then the ribbed part of the belt is always on the the idlers that have or the the pulleys that have the ribs in them so you get like a half inch breaker bar pretty much rotate the tensioner kind of slip the belt over the pro charger side last so i started from the bottom kind of worked my way all through the the tensioners and stuff like that and then i slipped it on the pro charger last and then then i let go of the tensioner um it was kind of easy for me i kind of stood in my bumper and on my tire at the same time while i was doing it so it kind of gave me some leverage i mean if you're leaning over the front of the truck like this and trying to do it it's probably not going to be fun um if you could i'd suggest maybe having a friend or somebody to help you uh just to do the tensioner and then that way you can kind of route the belt um, and you can use two hands and stuff like that. I mean, it's not terribly hard, but uh, I guess depending on your situation, it could be a little bit tricky. So, yeah. Uh, I think next thing we're gonna be doing is working on the intercooler and getting all the piping routed right. And yeah, I did, oh, actually, I gotta run to um, the hardware store because I was looking all around and there's one 3 8 bolt that's supposed to go to this to that bracket that we installed earlier but i have no idea if my kit didn't have it or i just dropped it somewhere i can't find it anywhere so i'm gonna go to the hardware store it's a three eighths by like two and a half inch and then i'm gonna get that and then once that's all in um i'll start working on the intercooler piping and it should be good so i just got back from home depot had to go pick up that bolt for anyone that's curious or runs into the same issue and their kid is missing it this is a 3 8 by 2 inch bolt and it's a standard thread so it's an it's a 16 uh, so it's the coarse thread not the fine thread so got that installed with the washer or the washer and the spacer so got all of that tightened down the belt everything uh, i think the next step is going to be doing the intercooler piping and getting the intercooler mounted and all that stuff i got the intercooler mounted they provide the brackets pretty much use your ac condenser bolts and it bolts up up here on both sides and then they provide brackets on the bottom that go to this metal piece this support bracket um i mean i'm running into my first like packaging issue with having a winch and a super high clearance bumper so for my winch, the control box is mounted here um, to offset it in case I didn't want to have anything over here hitting the control box. But the intercooler is now over there, so I unbolted the control box. I gotta find a way to pretty much bolt this somewhere in this area where I can still reach the switch on this side. Um, so I'm gonna have to work through that eventually. I'm just gonna start working on the intercooler piping just to make sure you know everything lines up how it's supposed to and then do that stuff first i'm just working the intercooler piping right now um i might have come across an issue because i might be missing one of the the piping that i need so on the driver's side pretty much have the surge tube running over here i did have to cut down here just to kind of clearance because when the headlight is in it kind of pushes this down and Maybe it's just because I have the factory LED headlights, but yeah, so this, I cut a little bit, 
and then this has clearance now. So the issue is on the passenger side because this side clears, but there's another pipe that I'm supposed to have that goes right here to this silicone that goes to the throttle body. So I'm kind of at a standstill right now. I gotta figure out if I can find one locally or how long it's gonna to take to get one from Pro Charger because I kind of need that to continue everything. So I don't know, I'm just gonna keep working it, kind of finish whatever I can and then see what the steps would be. Okay, so uh, since I was running into some issues yesterday because I was missing that one pipe, I kind of started routing everything else and then because it's like a two inch aluminum pipe anyway, or two and a half inch, what I did was just took some aluminum pipe that I got from my friend, cut it the right size, and then it's actually right here. So there was supposed to be another pipe that they included here. Um, but after everything was routed, it didn't seem like a 45 degree bend would fit too well right here. So I just did a straight two and a half inch pipe. It's about maybe four and a half, five inches long. And then got that all connected. So that's going through the throttle body as a silicone, all the clamps are on there pretty much. Um, I'm gonna double check, make sure all the, the clamps are tight. Then after the clamps are tight, make sure I'm gonna be doing the air box, like relocation, I don't know what they are. They're like these little spacers and they pretty much shift the air box a little bit back because where I'm relocating the battery is gonna be over here. So just to kind of get a little more clearance, I think it pushes the air box back a little bit. So I have more space. This power steering will shift over and then, yeah. So I'm gonna start working on that and I'll show you guys what it looks like after that. So now that I got the air box and then those relocation brackets bolted in. So this is how it looks. So it's kind of, you can see typically the battery would mount here, but because I have my call intake mod, um yeah this is over here so it's a little bit harder so that's why i'm relocating the battery here um before you do do this there's that little cup that kind of redirects i guess like water or whatever it is that that sticks into the fender well uh you just gotta make sure you remove that before you do this part and reinstall the air box so now that's reinstalled pretty much i'm gonna start working the intake tube i believe i gotta see um or the inlet tube and then get that installed with the math and everything and then gonna be throwing in the provided high flow air filter that goes into the factory air box pretty much got the inlet tube and the air box all mounted up got the pcv hooked back up the sensor all the clamps are tight so you can see how that looks so this is actually like a plastic piece that goes over like the inlet side of the, the pro charger and then there's a silicone this aluminum and another silicone that kind of bends to the air box and then i also have the k and high flow air filter um for this pcv line that we undid earlier you pretty much take it off and you flip it around and then that gets on there with the factory clamps and then your sensor over here for the math gets plugged back in and then you can kind of plug one in. I don't think the other clip in the back will reach, but that's okay. At least one side is kind of secure. I'll figure out a way to kind of secure that a little more. The next thing I'm gonna be working on is the battery relocation. So I'm just gonna kind of set it up and I guess see how it fits in there and how I gotta adjust the power steering where I gotta shift it and everything. Now, to be honest with you guys, I think that was probably the most frustrating portion of this install so far um the reason for that is like if you follow the instructions like yeah i read ahead um just because i knew that was going to come next but i never thought the battery relocation was going to be like that like annoying to do um but i got it in and you use these two bolts and there's actually a clip here that your power steering um slides into so you take off the factory bracket that holds the power steering um to the fender well so you take it off of that and you slide it onto this one um the biggest headache was just trying to get this onto the tray 
with all of this in the way. So it was a little challenging. I'd suggest if you could do it, do it before you do this coming from the intercooler. Um, I would just do this whole thing just so you have space. You can kind of work a little more free and there's not as much stuff in your way. I had the, I took off the upper radiator hose um, just to kind of mess with the power steering reservoir and kind of make some space. Um, other than that, you just have the two bolts here. There's a spacer that goes under this part of the tray and then the bolt goes through that. And then you have the all thread that holds the, the battery holder. I think the next step, we put that plastic piece back in here that goes under the battery and then get the battery in here, start running the wires and then back to the other side and then hook it up with the actual positive and negative for the truck. So I'm gonna start doing that and get the battery back in here first. Um, I might try and plug in the reservoir before I do uh, the battery because it's kind of tight in here and there's not much space for all the plugs and everything that the washer reservoir is supposed to mount to or plug into. So I might dive into that a little bit, skip ahead and then do the battery after that and then start running my wires. But definitely that was a good call um, because the plug for the washer reservoir is right down here. If the battery was here, it'd be a lot less convenient to get to it, especially if it was under this plate. So I just pretty much ran that and then the rubber hose is actually down there. It goes to the, the new reservoir. I kind of ran them underneath the box. And then I kind of left some extra wire here just in case this isn't the, the permanent home for this. But I pretty much had a 90 degree like metal bracket that I found in my garage. And I just kind of went like that. And then I bolted this to that so it could offset it from my, um, my call intake. So now I have my washer reservoir relocated and the plug and the rubber hose that'll power the washers is actually right down there and then that's pretty much it so next thing i'm gonna do is get the battery in i'm gonna clean it off a little bit it's kind of dirty get the battery in get that locked in run the wires for the battery to the other side get everything all zip tied and i'll start working on i believe it's the the fuel pump booster so i'm gonna be doing that after this so it's actually the next day and i got it running a little later last night around eight o'clock kind of just made sure everything was good and you know i didn't really show much it was getting late kind of wanted to finish it so kind of just buckled down started getting to it and then finished it up so you guys can see now charger is installed had to run the got the battery in pretty much the inlet to um air box everything's plugged back in um, after i got it running i pretty much just wanted to finish it up and kind of button some things up like the pcv hose right here uh the stock was actually a little short i don't know maybe my inlet tube is set a little more forward than how it should have been but um it was a little short so there's barely anything biting onto those fittings so i ended up picking up some 5 8 hose kind of just cutting it a little bit longer through that in there and then that way it's just you know there's a little more of the hose that's on the fitting um what else did i do uh that's pretty much it i got the around the battery cable over so i got the the battery connected back to the truck everything's good there pretty much just plugged everything back in the truck put the grill back on so you guys can kind of see that's how it's looking right now um on the inside i have a boost gauge a aem boost gauge and uh air fuel ratio gauge um it's kind of just ghetto mounted right now because i actually sent the sent the a pillar over here the plastic trim that's here i sent that to ortiz customs to custom make some gauge pods for these gauges so while i'm waiting for those i just kind of use a series of like l brackets and whatever and just just to kind of mount them up so i got my boost gauge and then i also have the air fuel ratio gauge got those cooked up 
just keep in mind for the air fuel ratio gauge you need to um, run it to your exhaust so you're typically going to need an extra bung uh, for the Y pipe on for the URD Y pipe it has an extra bung in front of like the stock O2 sensor position so I just took out that cap that was in there and then threw the sensor for the gauge in there and then yeah pretty much ran uh, the little vacuum line for the boost gauge ran that to the surge valve um, I can show you guys where that is let me see <clears throat> it's a little hard to see but um, so right here this is the boost um, the boost gauge line so that's into this one if you're not going to be running a boost gauge you actually have um, a cap or like a brass fitting that you can put in here that just caps this hole um, and then the other one is for the surge valve or for the bypass other than that I had to just trim the engine cover they kind of give you a picture of how to trim it so I kind of started low and then test fit it and then did that a couple like twice you know just made clearance that way you can clear this inlet tube because yeah that goes on looks good um but yeah that's pretty much it so i think the next thing i'll do for you guys is kind of start it up so you guys can hear how it sounds uh it's it's actually pretty damn loud so i'll show you guys that right now again the next day but I finally got everything pretty much finished up I had to relocate one of the grounds for the AFR gauge so I guess for whatever reason if you have the boost gauge and the AFR gauge ground wires together at the same spot like I don't know maybe whatever it was the connection wasn't good so the AFR didn't want to turn on when the truck was on so I ended up taking that ground running it to my radio and then I grounded it there and then turned on the truck and then pretty much everything popped up like normal. So that's going to be pretty much it for, you know, the install. Um, I want to do some pulls for you guys, but I think I got to do this break in period. It's about like 500 miles, um, kind of just some easy driving for now. And then once I finish that break in period, I can kind of show you guys, you know, how it feels, give you guys my thoughts a little bit because I'll be driving a little more um, and then you know i'll keep you guys updated but other than that yeah i mean if i had to compare it to like an install of like a magnuson supercharger i would say this one's a little more tedious just because of the intercooler piping um the magnuson like you do have to take the the upper and lower intake manifold off because the supercharger goes on to the actual motor because it's a root style um that can be a little tedious and nerve-wracking because you have your whole intake manifold open and you know you don't want to drop anything into the motor so that's kind of like you know the iffy part of a magnuson but the pro charger itself it's not a hard install it's just a little tedious trying to get everything to fit especially if you have a lot of stuff like mine like i have a switch pro i have the, the call intake mod um you know all that kind of extra stuff that you have in your engine bay or even the winch all of that kind of plays a key into how easy or you know hard the install might be so just keep that in mind i mean overall it's it's not anything super crazy and undoable i mean i took my time i kind of just you know did it here and there and it took me like two days and i got everything finished so it's not it's not crazy hard or anything so basic tools grinders you know sockets simple power tools you should be like more than on your way to install this thing i don't really have much other you know thoughts to really go into it now i mean i haven't really driven it enough yet to kind of give you guys more input on how it feels and how i like it don't like it whatever um but 
yeah, stay tuned. There's going to be a lot more episodes and I'll try and get more footage of this as it starts to break in and everything. But yeah, I hope you guys like the video. Um, enjoy the install. If you guys are thinking of doing some kind of supercharger, pro charger, turbo, whatever it is, you know, there's all kinds of different benefits and weaknesses for all of them. So I guess just do your research, see which one lines up best with your driving style and what you're trying to get out of your truck. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed again. And don't forget to like, subscribe, you know, do all the things, hit the bell notification and stay tuned for the next episode.